All right, thank you. And thank you all for coming to my presentation. Um, I guess I'll start by motiva motivating and introducing uh, the research project that I'm working on. And then I'll describe what laser speckle looks like. And so PDV is an acronym for photon Doppler velocimetry. And that's a velocimetry diagnostic that we use uh, in application to explosive tests to measure velocities up to several kilometers a second. Um, so I'll describe what laser speckle looks like in that regard. Um, a, an experimental test bed that I made uh, just to see how we could relate speckle dynamics back to surface speeds. And then different features that I looked at extracting from the data um, to try to get a better and better measure of what the surface speed actually is. Um, so researchers have been looking at laser speckle basically since the laser was invented uh, in the 1960s. Uh, a lot of work was done in the 70s and 80s in terms of point measurement applications. So you're looking at speckle as measured at a point in space. Um, imaging applications have also been done more recently to try to get a feel for fluid flow and surface evolution, strain, that sort of thing. But what makes PDV, or Doppler velocimetry, uh, a unique application uh, are at least a few things. Firstly, um, you've got one fiber that's transmitting and receiving the optical signal. And, and then that speckle uh, embedded in that signal is heterodyned with reference signal because really your sensor is an interferometer in this application. Um, perhaps the other big difference, maybe the biggest difference, is that your surface is going to move through different optical regimes uh, in the sense that usually in PDV we set up on one side of the focal plane per probe and then as the surface is excited it moves through the focal plane so it goes from the far field to the focal plane uh, to the, um, I guess, through it to the near field. Um, and just generally speaking, signal strength is limited in our photo detectors that we're using are, are have high pass filters so we're not looking at DC content. Um, so the bottom line is that people are using PDV uh, to get velocity data. It's a primary diagnostic on explosive tests and across the Department of Energy and elsewhere. I know there's a group at CEA in France that uses it quite a bit. Um, and laser speckle is necessarily a part of PDV data. Uh, you can either mitigate it or you can try to use it for something. Uh, so this is all in the context of trying to use it for something. So this cartoon here illustrates how you could have an illuminating beam. Uh, in PDV, your probe would be somewhere up here. And it would also be what's measuring your reflection from the surface. Um, your surface might be made up of different features shown here, uh, which are rough compared to the wavelength of light. And that's sort of a critical assumption to a lot of these speckle analyses. Um, shown here are uh, surface features that I've numbered 1 through 5 that are normal to um, or whose, whose normal reflections point back toward the probe. So that's an example of a subset of features here that might be seen by the probe. Uh, the different optical path lengths here impart different phase lags on their different reflections. And if you sum those up in the complex plane, it might look something like this, where you've got amplitudes and phases that, when you sum them, give you a random amplitude, a random phase. When you put a bunch of these next to each other in an image, you get something like this. So this is just a single mode fiber reflecting off of a nominally smooth metal surface, although it's rough compared to the wavelength. And you get these speckles at about 50 to 200 microns in diameter. Um, that's, that's caused by behavior like this. So here's an architecture that shows uh, what PDV looks like. You've got a measurement laser. Uh, we usually use 1550 nanometers, so that's infrared. Uh, that couples to optical fibers, and the signal goes via a circulator over to a probe. That probe focuses the signal on a target surface. Uh, you measure the reflection. That signal goes here where it's heterodyned with the reference signal, and then you measure the, um, the interference between the two. PDV measures the Doppler shift of a surface moving along the beam axis. And it's, it's one-dimensional in that sense. That's all the information that you get. So when I talk about trying to use speckle to get information about motion perpendicular to the beam, that would be free uh, in the context of what PDV normally does. Um, the illuminating beam would generally look something like this, Gaussian in shape. 
anywhere from 20 to 200 uh, microns in diameter. But then the reflection from the surface is going to look something like this, uh, where you get bright regions, dark regions, and, and this is going to be a random uh, but fixed property of the illumination of a point on the surface. So I use the test setup shown here just to get a feel for if I've got a PDV type setup and I send a signal off a beam splitter to the surface, I can then image what the speckle pattern actually looks like and I can correlate that to what my PDV system is measuring for the same point in space. And what I've shown here, these images are five millimeters square. Um, so that gives you a feel of the scale. The circle here is what the PDV probe is actually going to see based on that numerical aperture. And translating my target surface perpendicular to the probe by 100 microns, I saw this change uh, in the speckle pattern. So this is what people in the field call boiling in the sense that the speckle pattern didn't exactly translate intact from picture to picture. You get random amplitude fluctuations. So you can imagine that if this is what the PDV probe is seeing, you're integrating the intensity over this region, and that's going to give you amplitude fluctuations in your data uh, that are independent from the Doppler shift that you're otherwise trying to measure. Um, I guess this is just one more way to illustrate the matter. I have a graduate student working for me developing a numerical model of the situation. So here again, you get a feel for the surface profile, um, how it may be illuminated uh, by a beam with the intensity shown by the color here. And then you're going to get phase um, because of the beam diffraction and also from surface features. And that phase is all going to sum together to give you something like this. Again, these speckles are about 100 microns in diameter. So as the surface moves, those change. And the question is, what can you find out from the way they're changing? So typical PDV data is going to look something like this. Um, you know, you, I said we're using filters that don't measure D, um, photo detectors that don't measure DC. So it's centered around zero. If you zoom in on the voltage as a function of time, you can see the, the frequency associated with the Doppler shift. But when you zoom out, you get these low frequency fluctuations, and that's caused by the speckle. So this is literally a bright speckle, or a couple bright speckles dominating your signal. And in these regions, your signal has disappeared completely. So again, you can imagine that that's sort of a hassle for extracting velocity information from the data. Um, but there is real information buried in that. So I use the setup shown here. Um, again, this is just a three-channel PDV system with a laser uh, heterodyning. My probes are down here. And they're looking at a projectile that moves across their fields of view. Um, you, you can get a photo uh, idea of what's going on down here. This is a nylon projectile. And it was constrained by the plastic track here. And here's one probe looking down the bore of the track. And then two probes looking from up here. One of them was normal to the surface, and one was angled with respect to the surface. So my goal was that the bore probe is going to measure the magnitude of the velocity and give me sort of a, a, a known case, uh, tell me how the projectile is actually moving. And I can relate that to what the normal probe sees. And if features in the data uh, from the speckle allow me to measure the transverse speed here, which should be the same as the velocity magnitude seen here. And then the angled probe, my goal is to show that I could measure both at the same time with one probe. Um, so the title of the talk was comparing features uh, with regard to performance in, in measuring speed. And so I looked at three features, um, frequency analysis, which I'm already using for PDV anyways. The idea is that as speckles come and go, they're going to do so on a time scale. And the question is, can you relate that time scale or that frequency to the speed of the surface? Um, I did an autocorrelation analysis. And here I've shown an example of the autocorrelation of PDV data where this high frequency periodicity is caused by Doppler shifting, but the sort of slow decay is actually caused by the speckle dynamics. And so the point at which the autocorrelation envelope drops below 1 over E is called the coherence time. And from that, um, people showed 30 years ago that you can get some information on the surface speed, although that was a different optical regime. And then the last technique is variance analysis. 
So again, work 25 years ago described how you could take the variance of the signal and the variance of its time derivative and relate those to speed, um, although there are some issues with that in our application. So here I show a comparison between the variance approach and the autocorrelation approach. Um, the velocity is on the vertical axis for all these plots, and the horizontal axis is position on the projectile as it moved across the field of view. Uh, the red line is the known velocity measured by the Bohr probe, and the dark blue is velocity calculated by the autocorrelation approach. The light blue is calculated by the variance approach, and um, the autocorrelation approach does okay. There's some structure there that I can't really explain, but it, it's in the right ballpark uh, as far as the values that we know in this case. The variance approach was highly susceptible to signal to noise ratio. So if the variance in my signal was largely caused by noise, then um, I, I tended not to get a representative value in terms of calculating speed, which makes sense, but the people who published on this a couple decades ago I think had a very high uh, signal strength, and so they weren't really concerned with variance caused by noise. So you can filter, uh, which is what I've shown with the dashed light blue lines, but if I filter in these regions of low signal noise ratio and I get good agreement, then I lose my good agreement in regions of high signal noise ratio. So the bottom line is that the variance approach is kind of subjective and maybe not a reliable way to go. Uh, lastly, um, on the left here, I've shown frequency content. So these are Fourier transforms um, of different window lengths. And then on the right, I show autocorrelations calculated with different window lengths. And what you see is, uh, well, I guess what I've shown in the bottom, that the location of the peak frequency um, is relatively stable as I increase the window length, meaning there's not a systematic bias for low, for short records. Uh, there is a systematic bias for short records if I'm using the autocorrelation approach, um, but generally the precision tends to be a better behaved. So if I were just to take a look at these pictures and try to give a recommendation, I would say the autocorrelation approach is probably the way to go, unless you're really limited to short time records, in which case the frequency approach might be better. Uh, so to wrap things up, speckle-induced dynamics in the data, which happen whether you want them to or not, um, they are related to the surface's transverse speed. And we've shown and, and published in other papers that a single probe can actually measure the Doppler shift along its beam and the speckle caused by motion perpendicular to the beam at the same time. Um, we related those dynamics, those speckle-induced features, to, to several signal features that you can quantify in the data. Uh, the variance approach, which had been written about, um, we showed to be pretty subjective in terms of its performance. Uh, I think there's promise for using the frequency content but it looks like the autocorrelation approach, the statistics are really better behaved, um, especially, like I said, as you're using longer and longer time records. Uh, so that's all I've got. I'd be happy to take any questions.